Hey guys, it's a friction here at Tiger Tank 1 2, however you want to call me. I don't really care, and welcome back to World of Tanks. Today it's not going to be World of Tanks on PC, but we're going to be talking about an upcoming patch that might have some really, really big implications for the entire World of Tanks ecosystem and the entire cosmos. So on the 27th of April, World of Tanks Modern Armor will be released on the World of Tanks console version. Now, you guys know that there are several different versions, or maybe you don't know, there are several different versions of World of Tanks out on different kind of platforms. There's World of Tanks on PC with the North American server, the South American server, the European server, the Russian server or the Sys server, the Chinese server, the uh, East Asia server. All of them operate on their own and they're only for PC and you cannot interchange or you cannot switch between those servers. Now there's also a Steam version that is coming out for World of Tanks, which is a complete different World of Tanks. Uh, it's the same, but you now are able to switch the servers, but you cannot actually utilize your old account. Then there's World of Tanks Blitz, which was you know designated for low-end hardware, for MacBooks, for cell phones, and you know your Android phones and your iPhones. Then you have World of Tanks console. So there's a, a big ecosystem. Wargaming have really milked this entire brand to the death. And World of Tanks console is going to be the very first World of Tanks game, at least to my knowledge, that is going to get new modern tanks. We're actually talking about Cold War era tanks all the way to at least the 1980s. Um, since we are looking at an M1A1 Abrams, and I think the M1A1 Abrams is a 9080 tank, at least. I think it was introduced in the 80s. But why are we talking about this? I'm not a channel for World Tanks consoles. I don't play World Tanks consoles myself. I did play it once. I tried it out once, like six years ago when it came out, but I haven't played it since. And I know that there is a lot of controversy around World Tanks consoles. Uh, the last couple of months was not easy. They were um, upset about Crew Point, uh, Crew 2.0. They were upset about the UI changes. And I think a lot of people stopped playing World Tanks consoles. World of Tanks consoles on the, you know, um, if, we, if we look at it from the content side of things, I think World of Tanks consoles and PC are very similar to one another. The gameplay is also very, very close. You know, they're related, obviously. But there are some differences. Uh, I think you can see the tank barrel when you're in sniper mode. And it is more immersive. You're more down to the ground, more, you know, closer to the vehicle. Uh, it's not as much as bird view, uh, this bird, bird kind of view that you have with World of Tanks on PC. So we're going to be talking about what this can mean for us, these implications, because there are going to be new tanks coming in to World of Tanks. And if you like it or not, 2015, they made an April Fool's joke about modern tanks coming to World of Tanks, and they have always denied it. They've always denied a lot of things, but in the end, they might just roll back. That's how they operate. That's how um, Gaijin also operates on War Thunder. Um, and we're going to be taking a bit of a, you know, closer look at all of these new and upcoming changes to World of Tanks console. So World of Tanks... Modern Armor is going to be released on April 27th, that's in just a couple of days, and I'm just gonna tell you guys what it's all about. At long last, introducing modern tanks into World of Tanks, branching into different eras of history with a whole new tech tree and separate battle group, so they're going to be in a different matchmaking system, which is, I think, probably the safest choice. Expanding the game with new maps available for both the World War II era and Cold War era, Adding in features that you, the community, have long requested, such as artillery-free battles in Cold War mode, along with consumables like smoke screens. So yeah, that's what I would like to see in the World of Tanks PC version as well, artillery-free battles, but maybe not in the Cold War era, although we already have a lot of Cold War tanks, but we'll get to that in just a second. So, it's more than just an update, it's the next step in the game, bringing you massive new additions while also updating the established gameplay at the heart of the battlefield. So they see this as a, a huge evolution for the game itself. So this is a big deal for World Tanks consoles. So, what is this going to be bringing into the game? It's going to bring era-based matchmaking, artillery-free gameplay, tanks from the Cold War era, although we already have some, and more. 
Um, yeah, there's going to be a co-op mode, but I think they already had a co-op mode. And you can see right here, there's the, the plan for the launch day, everything. They're going to show off all the things. And we're just going to be really interested in their era-based matchmaking and in the Cold War, ve uh, Cold War vehicles. Because obviously that's um, something that could come over to World of Tanks PC. And I think it would be good if we are a bit pre-informed because if it works on consoles and people will be coming back to play World of Tanks because of the modern tanks, they might think that maybe they're going to add it into the world of tanks on pc and on the other platforms i think it's very well possible it's going to be a thing that we'll have to discuss in just a second afterwards so this is how it looks like so this is on consoles i don't really know how the battle screen looks anymore um, but at least you have two game modes now you have world war ii and you have cold war so you have to decide where you're going to be playing and with Cold War, there are going to be like two nations, the Eastern Alliance and the Western Alliance. And those are the two tech trees. Obviously, one looks like NATO. The other one looks like the Soviet Union. You know, they're all a bit <laughs> uh, like, um, no, actually, uh, what is it called again? The um, the pact, the, oh, I forgot the name, um, the Warsaw Pact, exactly. The Warsaw Pact. So... This is how they're going to be, um, okay, let me check real fast. Each tank belongs to a specific era in the table below. There are three levels of tanks per era. Eras match make within each other only. Post-war era tanks like the M47 Patton will never face the M1A1 Abrams, which is situated in the detente era. This, is, this system has been designed to create closer games in terms of power levels of the tanks for more excitement and balance. I think this is a good way to handle it. So they have um, these era points, like point one, two, and three. And then you have these eras, post-war era, the escalation era, and the detente era. So you're only going to be playing against vehicles. If you're playing the escalation era, you're only going to be playing against the escalation era tanks. If you're playing post-war era, you're only going to be playing against post-war era tanks, and you're never going to be facing the taunt era tanks with any of those. So that's a good thing. The taunt are also only going to be playing against each other. The only thing that's a bit critical is how can they guarantee that matchmaking is always going to function, but we'll have to see what kind of tanks they have in the game. So that's the next thing that we want to check out, because this could be very much very interesting for us as well in the near future maybe in the next year maybe in two years who knows if world tanks are still running by then so they're going to bring in they're going to bring be bringing in 18 new tanks and already we've talked about the post-war era and the different um eras that they're in and they're only going to be playing against each other then we have the m46 a1 pattern now we already have the pattern in game um also this variant uh, i'm not sure if it's the a1 but um, there is no big difference. Obviously, they uh, are just putting in the M46A1. It's going to be the very first vehicle that you can play in this new game mode. Then the M47, uh, which is the tier 9 currently in World of Tanks, at least in, on the PC um, side of things. The M46, but I'm not sure if you can upgrade these tanks. But it looks quite interesting. Then we're going over to the M48A5PI or P1. Um, also a tank that we have at, in the game currently, I think. Yeah, it's the M48A5. So, so far, there's a lot of um, vehicles that have just been, you know, um, recycled and put into a new game mode uh, that they're calling quite evolutionary. Then we're finally getting... No, actually, we're also... We also have the M60 in the game. So, the M60-61. Um, this is also a tank that we have in the game at the moment. So, nothing new there. But now we're getting to the new stuff. The M60A1. Uh, quite an interesting vehicle. You can see that their modernizations um, have taken part on this vehicle. The turret has changed quite a bit. Uh, it's got a bit more, um, more angles to it. But it's still an M60 hull. Uh, as you can see right there, but still very interesting. Then you're getting to the M60A3, which is even more modern and uh, I think is still inactive in certain countries. Um, I think Turkey uses them. So, so far, um, this is probably going to be the newest one. 
Um, and then we're getting to the good stuff, the M1 Abrams. So the very first iteration of the M1 Abrams, which um, did come out of the project of the XM1 and uh, from General Motors, Pretty damn cool tank. That is going to be the question. Is it going to be fitting into the game? How are they going to be balancing it with the armor that it has and with the 105 millimeter recoilless rifle that it also has? Uh, I'm not. No, it's not a recoilless recoilless rifle. It's a 105 millimeter L7 ordnance kind of thing. Then the M1A1 Abrams, the the very first upgrade uh, with a 120 millimeter smooth bore gun. Uh, which is probably the Rheinmetall um, 120. And now we're finally in the modern era. Like with this, we're in the modern era, but this is really the modern era. This is M1A1 is um, a variant that still is uh, in use today. Also the M1A2. Now the M1A2 is probably the, um, yeah, that's the newest variant. There's also M1A3, I think, in um, production currently or being upgraded. And modernized that's what happens and this has a more powerful gas turbine engine and is really a modern tank that is something that the u.s military still uses and really actively uses the m1a1 i think as well but they have probably upgraded both of them to the uh, at least a2 version now then we're going over to the eastern alliance with the t44 nothing new there t55 a t54 obr 1949 then the Object 165, um, I'm not really sure if that is the right name or if they are just, it's a bit weird. So Object 165, but they call it the T62. So it's a bit weird that they're calling it Object 165, but it's basically a T62A that we have in the game. Then we have the T62, um, which we also, which is the tank that we know and love, I think mostly. It's a bit different. It's not the A variant. The gun looks a bit different, I think. But other than that, it's already a vehicle that we do know. And then we finally get to the new tanks, the T-72A. Now, this is a really cool tank. Um, a tank that I really want to get in War Thunder. So that's going to be quite interesting. You can really see how um, they've completely went over the design from heavy tank and medium tank to a main battle tank with this one. I think the T-62A is still kind of an early main battle tank, but, you know, the T-72 is, T-72A is really a main battle tank. Then we go to the T-72AV with um, additional protection with uh, reactive armor. So that's really cool. It's going to be interesting to see if they actually have anything, if the reactive armor is really going to be working on this vehicle or not. Then we get to the T-72B. Um, you can see it's a massive vehicle. It has boxes at the front. I don't like that. I don't like when they have like 3D skins to the front. If that is like a weak spot, they're kind of hiding it. That kind of sucks. Then to the T-72BM, which is even more fortified, has probably a bigger gun as well. And um, yeah, looks pretty cool. And finally, we get to the T-72BU. Now, most of these tanks have the opportunity to also utilize um i think anti-tank missiles at least the soviet ones right here the t-72 variants they usually have the opportunity to launch missiles from their barrel but um, i'm not sure if they're going to be adding that into the game so these 18 vehicles are making it into the game i'd say at least half of them we already know uh, we already have played in world tanks so that's not really that much of a of a change to be fair so I don't really see that as a massive improvement because I think War Thunder's, um, because I think War Thunder does have, uh, World of Tanks, excuse me, because I think War, uh, World of Tanks does already have these vehicles, also World of Tanks consoles. And what's really awkward is this is a M4 Sherman fighting a T-72. Like, I thought that was not going to be possible. <laughs> Hopefully this is just, just, um, you know, just just for design purposes or whatever. It's just the artwork, nothing else. So the maps, they're going to get new maps. Deathful, which is a desert kind of a, a desert kind of type map. Um, looks kind of cool, definitely. New maps, that would be great even for us. Um, we would love to get new maps from World of Tanks uh, PC. Then there is going to be Xiao, Xiao Bang 
which is like a, an Asian map. It looks really, really good. It looks really cool with all the vibrant colors. Uh, I like it, the waterfalls as well. And then we have Fredvang, which is a winter map all with Aurora Borealis. Pretty damn cool as well. Um, it looks really nice. At least the skyline looks really nice. Um, but um, the ground, obviously, like the map itself looks okay as well. And Mannheim, which is a city in Germany. Um, so it's going to be urban combat. That's probably going to be the favorite map for a lot of people playing like modern tanks later down the line. At least I can see that becoming one of the favorite maps. So let's have a, have a bit of a verdict. Um, let's conclude this. What do I think of the modern tanks? Well, I mean, the evolution and the development, I mean, it was clear that they had thought about bringing modern tanks into World of Tanks for quite a bit now. And I think that the console version is probably one of the ideal places for them to try it out. It's like a trial run. If, if you think about it, if they wanted to bring it out on PC, they can try it out there. And the thing is just that World of Tanks consoles has been a trial, like a trial place for a few years now, ever since it was released. And um, they've tried out things on the World of Tanks console that a lot of people, a lot of players, unfortunately, had to endure. But I think it's an interesting thing. It's an interesting notion. I'm not sure if it's coming to PC. I'm not really sure if we want that on PC at the moment. But it could be a future update. The thing is that we have to find out how well they play. So we'll have to find out on April 27th. It's going to be quite interesting to see some streams to watch some YouTube videos on what these World of Tanks console players and YouTubers think of the new game mode and of the new content, because I cannot really say that much about it so far. I think the, the, the era-based matchmaking is very nice. I think it's also very smart to do it like that, to <clears throat> get that all of, out of the place. But the question is, which vehicles are going to be really strong in that era and which are not going to be that strong? Do you have to unlock equipment and modules? What does it look like? Those are answers that we'll, we're just going to be getting on the 27th of April. So I'm going to see if I can download it again on my PS4. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be playing it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be recording it. But I will be very interested in seeing what will happen with World Tanks on consoles. What the people think, what the players think. So far, it doesn't look too bad. Um, it looks like they're just adding more tanks and they're balancing out by just putting out vehicles that are basically on par. There are not a lot of tanks so far, but they still have the option to obviously dive into other nations, get other main battle tanks, other Cold War tanks. There's a lot of vehicles out there that they can grab and put into it. So this is just a start. So yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this little video that um, you guys... Um, like this kind of talk uh, and comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, have a good one.